Yeah, it was a crazy, crazy feeling and it was one of the, the loudest stadiums I've I've ever been in and obviously the first game I, I got to score and, and experience it and yeah, I'm looking forward to a lot more this season. This is the official Leeds United podcast. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Jaden Anthony. How are you doing my friend? Yeah, yeah, no, I'm good. Thanks, thanks for having me as well and yeah, I'm not excited. It's, uh... excited. It's a real pleasure to have you on the show, mate. Especially after that debut goal at the weekend, <laughs> how uh, how did that feel? Yeah, no, it was a crazy feeling. Um, yeah, I was warming up from probably just before the 60th minute, so it felt like ages before I came on. And then, um, yeah, no, luckily I, I got the goal and had the chance before as well that I thought I probably should have scored. Um, so yeah, it felt good to, to finally get a goal. Jaden, you've just said it there, mate. You thought that you had to score. You, the defender was twisted inside out, mate. The, the move, right? I used, I used to play with a couple of good wingers at Leeds United, OK? Now, when I saw you come on, there's nothing better than having somebody that is... You can see they've warmed up properly. You know your, your mindset is that you want to come on and do well for the team. And you, your first bit of movement when you nutmeg the, the defender and then twist him inside, I'm thinking, this could be goal of the season. This is one of the goals this season here. And it was just that, you know, the dolly shot at the end. But, you know, you, how did you how did you feel after that missed opportunity? Were you, were you, did it just set come too quickly for you in the yeah. game? Yeah, do you know what? I think it was. I, obviously, like I said, I'd, I'd done the, the first two skills and I probably got a little bit too excited and, and rushed the shot. I probably had a, a bit more time than I, I thought I did. And um, yeah, and I was a bit frustrated. And then luckily I got another chance from, from Georgie's obviously unbelievable skill. And then, yeah, I took my time on that one. What was going through your mindset when you were through on goal there, mate? Where after so soon, after your first opportunity, how did you... Because obviously I've I've played the game. I, I can explain it to a certain degree, but just for the you know for the listeners and the fans, you know, there's a lot of people get in one-on-one -on -one situations and completely crumble. That's when I tell a, a quality player the calm and the process what you went through there. So just try and explain what was going through your mind. Yeah, obviously I I, I sort of knew that. Um... Like the person that was marking me was was quite far behind me from from my movement beforehand, and then um, yeah, one of my old coaches, uh, Scott Parker, used to tell me to go cold in front of goal uh, in front of goal, and I saw it was. It sort of time slowed down, and it felt like I had probably more time than I did. Obviously, when I took the shot, there's there's two defenders next to me, but it didn't feel like that at the moment. I felt like I had loads of time, and I, and I didn't need to rush anything. And then yeah, luckily uh, it went in, and, and yeah, I could wheel off and celebrate with the fans. Outstanding. Well, I'm actually over here in Portugal at the moment, mate. I'm going to be playing with Scott Parker on a golf course <laughs> over here, so I'm going to get a bit, a bit of knowledge off him when I'm on the first tee box, and I'm absolutely crapping myself when I'm ready to hit that first tee shot. I'm going to remember that. Relax, <laughs> calm down cold. and breathe. Just go cold. Just go cold. <laughs> go cold. <laughs> <laughs> um, you just mentioned the fans there. Um, I mean, you you said you went cold, but the the cop absolutely erupted when you when you finished that in the bottom corner. What was that like hearing that roar at Ellen Road? Yeah, yeah, it was a crazy crazy feeling, and um, yeah, I had my my family in the crowd as well, and, and my girlfriend. And, nice. Um, yeah, I remember a, a game last last year here when I was on the bench, and um, I think it ended four three and. The, the crowd mm. was was unbelievable that day. Like it was one of the the loudest stadiums I've I've ever been in. And yeah, ever since I've come here, I've been excited to to hear that. And yeah, and obviously the first game I, I got to score and, and experience it. And yeah, I'm looking forward to a lot more this season. Yeah, Jim, was that refreshing to hear? Obviously, the last minute transfer the deadline deal came through, um, and I, I can sympathise with you, mate, because I, I left um, Carlisle United. Um, on transfer deadline to sign for Hull City. I know I shouldn't mention the Tigers on this podcast, probably, Matt, <laughs> but it was it was a mental, mental day that I had to go through because one minute I was obviously a Carlisle player and at five o'clock that evening I got the phone call to say that we've accepted a bid, you've got to pack your bags and get yourself off. How did how did yours how did your transfer deadline unfold with, <laughs> with um, the move to Leeds United and were you very excited because of what you'd seen previously playing against um, Ellen Road? Yeah, no, it was it was pretty similar. To be fair, obviously it was a a Friday. I'd, we travelled down to Brentford. I trained in the morning, and yeah, there was nothing about a move um, during the day. So I, I was just preparing for the game as as I would. And then um, probably five minutes before we got to the hotel, I got a, a call from from my agent saying um, obviously the move had come about, and yeah, I had to think about it. And then um, yeah, it was just a 
a, a load of phone calls during the day and then yeah I think it didn't get done right until the last minute but um, yeah no I was really excited obviously like I said last year I came here and, and experienced the crowd and I knew that uh, I'd probably thrive playing in front of in that environment I always uh, I love a, a stadium with a, a good energy and yeah no it's a, an exciting uh, exciting time to be here really well, we're, we're, th- we're thrilled to have you mate we know it was sort of in uh, irregular circumstances with the with the swap but um, you know we've we've basically been able to bring in a player who's got exceptional championship pedigree I mean you were brilliant um, with, with Bournemouth previously um, obviously you had the season in the Premier League last year and this is going to be a little bit different but what what are you hoping to achieve with, with Leeds this year I mean is, is, is getting back into the Premier League as soon as possible your, your aim yeah yeah of course obviously I think um, the, the squad we have everyone knows uh uh, we'll be pushing to to get that promotion, and um, yeah, there's a lot of teams in this league that are, will probably say the same. They they want to go for promotion, and if it's yeah. the, the playoffs or, or automatics, but yeah, I've come here with with a goal to to try and help as much as possible, and yeah, achieve that goal really. Obviously, that that goal yourself personally to get that first goal, it's a massive massive tick off the the list for this season. Uh, do you, are you a, are you a player like myself during the past I used to always set targets of goals and appearances in a season do you do that or are you just are you just a lad that takes it each game at a time yeah no I've I've never really done in terms of numbers I feel like um, yeah I've always I've always just I want, I want to create chances I feel like that I'm that type of player that, that creates chances and scores goals and yeah I have a goal to score as many as possible and I don't want to set a limit or set one too high in the other in the other way so yeah I just want to help the team as much as possible really um, in terms of creating and scoring and also the other side in, in terms of working hard for the team as well You know what I've just picked up on there with Jaden you're an entertainer you're, you're in the entertainment industry yeah I used to love he, he, he didn't just mention there when when the pressure's on you're playing in front of big stadiums you become entertained Robbie Williams is one of the best at it do you know what I mean I've, I've seen a lot of people and players in the past that are I call them training ground players where they're absolutely <laughs> amazing at the training ground you put them in front of an Elland Roadhouse and they, they can't even trap a football so you know what? from what we've seen of Jaden so far man if he's going to entertain like he is on that wing and and, and um be, be with a crowd I'm, I'm all for it mate so carry on entertaining Jaden please <laughs> it's, a, it's a joy to watch for sure thank you mate. I appreciate well, it I mean that's that's exactly what we want to see at Leeds as well we want to see players playing fearlessly and playing exciting and, and under under Farker it seems like that's going to be the order of business How, how's it been um, un, under the boss um, obviously you've only been here for a few weeks but uh, what's it like is that what he encourages in, in his players to play with flair and excitement yeah, yeah, I think obviously you see the, the attacking quality in the squad. I think, um, yeah, no, there's a lot of players that will, that will excite the fans this season. I think we'll all have a, a big pl- a role to play. And yeah, I think that's what the manager wants really to, for us to link up and, um, yeah, create some magic really. Is it going to be frustrating with, um, a bunch of teams that are trying to stifle that this year, maybe playing the, the old low block or putting men behind the ball? Is that, is that going to be frustrating for you guys? Have you guys got a plan for that going forward? I think, yeah, a lot of teams, a lot of teams in this league, they play um, obviously like five at the back and against teams like us where there's a lot of quality, a lot of teams will sit in and, and try and soak up some pressure. But I think that's down to us as the, the attacking players uh, to, to try and find gaps and, and create chances through that. And yeah, I think I, I always look forward to that challenge. And, and yeah, no, I think we have enough quality to, to try, and, try and break through teams. That, that's it, look. Is Daniel one of them coaches um, with the attacking players? Does he do you go through patterns of play, um, Jaden, in the final third, or is it? Does he basically say to you, lads, listen, when we get the ball in the final third, it's up to you to create magic? Does he give you? Does he give you that uh, belief and ability? Yeah, yeah, it's a bit of both, really. Obviously, um, I think he's probably one of the. Obviously, it's early weeks, but one of the most detailed um, managers I've worked with. I think the the meetings are very long, and and he, he plans out exactly what he wants us to do. And then, yeah, then it's up to us as as players. We have a lot of options um, when when we're on the pitch, and we sort of know where each other uh, should be. And then it's it's down to us to be there and put it into practice, really. And yeah, obviously, then um, we can create from from the positions we're in. But um, yeah, no, he, he's very detailed in what he wants, and yeah, I'm, I'm having to learn a lot quickly. All Leeds, aren't we? The official Leeds United podcast. Was Daniel a, a draw for you? Is he was he one of the reasons you wanted to to, to, to come to Leeds United? Yeah, yeah, no, hundred um, percent. 
Uh, obviously, he's been so successful in, in this division before. And um, yeah, obviously, I spoke a bit with Max Ahrens, um, who, mm -hmm. who's at Bournemouth now. Um, and he said he only spoke highly of him and said he'd, he'd be perfect for my for my play style. And um, yeah, I could learn a lot from him. And yeah, I'm seeing that already. And yeah, hopefully I can I can keep improving as a player this year and, and have some great success with this team. Well, you've just mentioned Max Ahrens there. Was there any other lads that have um, you've you've been involved with that you know before you came to Leeds United? Have you have you had to get to know everybody once you've arrived? Or was there any familiar faces that you know? Um, yeah, no, I, I I was at Arsenal with with Jan um, when he was when he was very young, and then he he got his move to Barcelona. Um, but yeah, no, I haven't seen him for a long time. And other than that, really, it was it was getting to know everyone. Obviously, I played against a few of the boys and um, yeah, played against Leeds last season. But um, yeah, no, I didn't know anyone uh, personally like that. So yeah, I've had to integrate very quickly. But uh, the boys made it easy for me, and yeah, no, I feel a part of this team already. What do you uh, What do you think of Leeds as a city? Obviously, it was something that Bridgie had to get used to when he moved down from the northeast. Uh, how was yeah, it? How don't was go it? where I used to go, mate. <laughs> <laughs> How's it working out for you so far? Have you enjoyed your time in the city? Yeah, yeah, no, I, it's, it's been really nice. Obviously, I, I've been in a, a hotel for, for a lot of the time and then I, I moved into a place uh, yesterday, so I, I feel okay. a bit more at home now. And um, yeah, no, obviously, I, I've got to go to a few restaurants and stuff. And yeah, no, it's a really nice place and, and everyone seems nice. And um, the weather's not the best down here, but um, yeah, um, I'm, I'm used to it now. And you said you've got your uh, your family with you as well. How have, I mean, how is that? I mean, as the life of a footballer, you just you never know where you, you you're going to end up. I suppose you can sign a, a four year deal, but you never know where you're going to be. So how how does your family kind of uh, approach that? Yeah, yeah, no, it was a, a big shock for them um, on on deadline day as well. And, and to be honest, <laughs> um, yeah, they didn't really know. Uh, what was happening right up until the end? I think they were sitting by the TV waiting, and um, yeah, no, they've they've been really supportive of it and and excited, and and they were made to feel very welcome at the game on the weekend. And um, yeah, that was a that was a really nice for them, and yeah, no, I'm, I'm really appreciative of that. Really, I'm glad to hear it. Well, the best way is the, another good way to settle into Leeds. Obviously, the shopping, but don't do the mistake that I did. I took me missus and showed her Harvey Nichols when I moved down. <laughs> Taking my life, mate. Cost me an absolute fortune to keep her happy. So, um, yeah, do the, do the do the coffee shops in the city centre, mate, and uh, yeah. look after yourself. But don't don't make that mistake. Yeah, I'll stay away. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> how um how's the training been? I mean, I, I I I'm curious as to the differences. Obviously, Premier League, Championship, but just from Bournemouth to Leeds, like what's the what's the training been been like? Has it been has it been intensive or has it been stuff you're used to? Like how's it how's it differ from where you've come from? Yeah, no, it's, it's it's very intense. Obviously, uh, the the staff here are very demanding. But um, yeah, no, I've been used to that at Bournemouth as well. I think it's a, a big culture up there as well. Um, in the way they train, it's been it's been hard for a few years. So I had a good pre season in fairness. So I came in and I, I was ready to go. So um, yeah, no, I've enjoyed it. And um, yeah, no, it's, it's been intense, but yeah, really enjoying it. You had the facilities at Leeds United, the training ground facilities. When I was there, we we had our first sign in '99. We had absolutely nothing. To be fair, it was a lovely. There was fields everywhere. We had the academy on site, but it was the old building down the bottom. And um, the second year, we I saw that whole new indoor arena and gymnasium come together at Thorpe Arch, which was um, mind blown to think that we, you know, we had a swimming pool and things like that, and to to see the transformation. Did um, what what's the facilities like compared to Bournemouth at Leeds United uh, regarding that regarding that? Because obviously, I haven't seen anything at Bournemouth. Yeah, no, it's, it's unbelievable here. I, I still think I haven't been in, in all the rooms. It, it feels like it's a massive, a massive training ground. And, um, you yeah, know, they got everything you need, really. Um, obviously, Bournemouth are, are currently building a new training ground. Um, so their one is, right now is quite small. It's, it's at the back of the stadium. But, um, you yeah, know, the, the facilities here are, are unbelievable. And like I said, it, it feels massive and um, you can get lost easily. Well, there's one room I don't want you to visit. That's the treatment room table, okay? Because that was my second. That was my second home. That wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, I'd say, first home. Ellen Road is your second home. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> scandalous, <laughs> scandalous. <here. laughs> um, all, all of your uh, your managers um, that you've been under. I mean, you've mentioned Scotty Parker there, but they've all spoken uh, incredibly highly of you. Um, you know, I've, I think Scott Parker said you were incredible. Gary O'Neill said that he loved you because you always wanted 
to do extra work. Uh, you're a fantastic member of the group. Uh, Iraola, who I imagine you were only uh, under for a short time, said, I love him as a person and as a player. He's a top, top guy. Um, what, what is it you think that managers love about you so much? Is it work ethic? Is it, what, what's, uh, is it just your, 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 your uh, personality in the dressing room? What is it? <laughs> this is I your time to shine and give yourself the biggest ego here, Jim. Go on. <laughs> Introduce yourself to Leeds fans. Tell us what managers love about you. Um... <laughs> I'd love to say it was my play style. I don't know. Um, but, uh, but yeah, no, I think, uh, yeah, I just, I always give my all for the team. I think um, it's clear. I, I always, I always try and track back and, and help the team as much as possible. And I think um, managers have always said to me that I'm I'm reliable um, on the pitch. And I think that's a, a good trait to have as a, as a player. Obviously, um, I like to excite and um and create and stuff but I also like to do the dirty work for the team and I think right. um, yeah a lot of people appreciate that in, in this game I'll just no, answer will. your question because you've been very modest there I can tell you exactly <laughs> Matt why because when you when you see players that like I see the impact when he came on and got the goal mm-hmm. at the weekend you, you're looking for that response in the mindset you don't want players sulking that they're not playing you yep. want healthy competition for places and you want people to be ready and switched on mentally, physically, and all, all that kind of thing. So from me looking on the outer and, you know, being, being involved in coaching and seeing body language is a big thing for me. So there's nothing better when you see a player that is ready to come on the field and want to do their best for that football club, for them, for them personally, but also for the football club. You can quite easily see people coming on and the body language is not there and they're going through the motions. And as a, as a coach, that's a, that's a coach killing moment because you've, then you've got to tap into what, what, why are they being like that? You know, is it, mm-hmm. is there might be something going on in their life off the field that you might have tapped into, or is it just basically because they've been sold and they've been dropped? But obviously what we've seen with Jaden, you know, it's a coach, coach's dream to have somebody like that. So another thing I want to, wanted to ask you about Jaden, do you, um, Obviously, there's video analysis sessions and all the rest of it. Do you do you like looking and dissecting your own performances and games with the analysis team? Are you one that does that, or you do you just wait for them to approach you? Yeah, no, I I always watch watch my my games and my my clips back um, after games, uh, usually by myself to be honest, and, and try and go through where I've gone wrong and and, and what I can improve on. And yeah, no, I think that's a, a big part of my routine, really. Um, yeah, usually did a day a day or two after the game once the the dust has settled and um, yeah the emotions are sort of out of it. Then yeah, I like to to try and improve and, and see what I can. I can do better next time. That's similar in your industry, Matt, as well. You would look back at your footages and, and have to look back <laughs> at clips of you acting, wouldn't you? I mean, I try and avoid it if I, if I can, mate, to be totally <laughs> truthful. Um, no, but you, know, the, but you know when you were going through it, that's, that's something that you've got, to, you've got to brush up and get, get better, of, haven't you? So the, interestingly, the hardest thing is to look at yourself and do better. That's very, very true. Interestingly, in, in my game, they have like uh, some directors won't let you do it. Because they think that you'll get too high, you'll get too hyper focused on what on on trying to hit certain beats that you'll kind of not be co- like you'll no longer be in the moment, as it were. Um, which I suppose is quite interesting in in football as well, because yes, you can. There's, there's a very technical aspect to it where you have to be in the right places at the right time, but it also can be an instinct game, can't it? I mean, you don't want to completely scrub that 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 reflexive instinctive passionate aspect of the game I mean take Ruta for example in that game that was doing things that that maybe the manager might have been like pass the bloody ball but instead he does this incredible step over and then takes it around one player takes it around the other you don't want to completely remove that from your game do you? Yeah, yeah, no, like you say, um, yeah, a lot of it does come down to instinct and yeah, I think it's about uh, picking and choosing uh, the moments that you can improve and and then um, not taking out that, that natural um, like where you don't think, you know, like it just comes off, and yeah, I think you, you got to keep that and, and try not to lose that. And like you say, it's quite similar. Obviously, I, I, I mentioned Scott Parker, but he didn't like um, us watching back training or or, or games in, in the training ground. So I so I used to um, yeah like sneak off and watch it on my iPad when I got home. So. Interesting. <laughs> yeah. Did he did he, uh, did he give a reason for that? No, because uh, I was especially coming through. It's just a big thing to to watch the training after. So I used there was a yeah. group of us that used to to go into the the media office and and just watch training. And then um, yeah, when he came in, he, he didn't like us doing that. I, I don't know why, but um, yeah, it's probably probably similar in terms of scrutinising yourself too much and yeah, losing yeah. that. So so maybe I don't know. Listening on together. Matt's a big gamer, aren't you, Matt? I am, mate. Yeah, I am. I'm. Uh, I'm. I'm a. I'm a keen golfer as well, and I'm not really very good at either of them. But 
There we go. I mean, do you do you play with all the other lads? Do you play with all the other uh, the other players? I know I know Pat Bamford's a, a keen player, and we had uh, we've had a few players on this year that have talked about it. Have you? Do you have like a, a group on PlayStation? You're all yeah. playing FIFA with each other. Yeah, I've, I've heard that. Obviously, Georgie's big into it. Pat Pat's into it. Um, yeah, there's a few in the team. Obviously, I've I've been in the hotel and the Wi-Fi has uh, not been so good. So I'm, I'm waiting for my for my Wi-Fi to come in, and then uh, I'll give all the boys a beat and uh, whoever wants one. Are you the best player? I gotta be, yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I back myself in, in FIFA, yeah. <laughs> So I, I love it how he can be so modest when it comes to his own playing ability <laughs> right. Right, on the field. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As soon as it yeah, comes to FIFA, FIFA. Like, yeah, 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 I'm the gun. I'm the best. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna speak to Pat. I want to, I want to know what uh, some score lines. Next time we get someone on, I want to know exactly what what you've yeah. done to him. Yeah, well, well, you know, it's really interesting. Oh, okay, once the Wi Fi's back up. <laughs> so talking about gaming, it was really strange the other day because um, when I was doing the uh, the, the coverage for LU TV for the Watford game. Um, they put two of my goals up against Watford that I'd scored that season um, in 99-2000 were they black and white and were they? Just, <laughs> they might as well have been they were really blurry but they weren't as blurry as my eyes and it was unbelievable I was so tired that night David O'Leary told us off uh, me and Harry Kuehl we'd been up playing um, there was a Anakin Skywalker um, computer game out then for oh, Star yeah. Wars and it was, where, it was the, where you had to fly these little drone things and we were up till half four in the morning and we came down for breakfast late so we were proper, proper gamers. And if you, I saw me goal that I scored and you see us run off doing the joy, <laughs> the joypad uh, thing with Harry Kuehl. It was mad, mate. So um, mate, if, it's, if it's good enough, if it's good enough, carry on doing it as long as you get in that mindset for the game. You mentioned about um, your early days there, you know, when you used to review your video stuff, I assume, was that when you were coming through at Arsenal? Yeah, yeah, Arsenal and um, yeah, through the academy of, of Bournemouth as well. Before I before I got to okay. the, the first team, I used to to watch quite a lot. Yeah, how was um, how was that coming through at a big club like like Arsenal? Like, did you have uh, do you have a lot of influences there? Were there were there any key figures that in your in your development throughout that that era? Yeah, yeah, obviously, um, yeah, it's a, a massive club, and yeah, they had some of the best facilities, best best coaches, and you know, it's the perfect place for me to grow. Um, yeah, I, um, a lot of uh, staff that I that I could lean on, and a lot of players that in my age group that have obviously made it to the top level as well. And um, it's actually funny I was speaking to to Ampa, Ethan Ampa, do the other day, and um, his dad was was one of my favourite coaches when I was at Arsenal, and um, yeah, wow. actually helped me a lot when I when I got released in terms of um, getting me a few trials and stuff. And you know, it's crazy that the world uh, works in. in a full circle and that's great now, to hear you know because <clears throat> there's not many coaches like we, we had this discussion a while back with uh, um, Carl Dollow on the yeah. interview on it and um, Carl was saying like the toughest thing is getting getting released or getting told that you you know you're not good enough because I'd, I'd, I'd been let down um, at Newcastle and at Middlesbrough when I was a kid Jane, so it was third time lucky for me at Sunland um, and like you say the coaches some, they didn't, didn't offer any help so that's really really good to hear um, you know that's probably why Ethan's so so grounded as well, and he's so switched on and an experience. He's got a mentor like that. So it was it was your mentors when you were when you were coming. Did you have any of the the current players at Arsenal that were mentor on you? Or is there something to do with yeah, family? Or, yeah, yeah. Obviously, in, in in my age group, we had um, Emil Smith Rowe and and Reece Nelson, who have obviously obviously gone on to have great starts to their careers. And um, yeah, they're they're unbelievable. Then above me was Eddie and Ketia and and Joe Willock and. Yeah, Eddie. Eddie helped me me so much, and obviously had a, a period here as well where where he done really well and, and scored loads of goals. And um, yeah, there was a period when when I was probably under sixteen, and he was in his first year of his scholarship, where we was both on the bench a lot, and yeah, we used to sort of lean on each other and uh, keep each other going. And um, yeah, then obviously he went on to to have an unbelievable time in in the Arsenal academy and, and scored loads of goals. And then um, yeah, obviously I had to take a different route and. Uh, move on but yeah and no, I think uh, he was a big part of, of keeping me going and keeping uh, believing in myself and yeah no he's a, a great person for sure Brilliant. I, we um, you know we don't want to dwell on the, the past too much because obviously you're flying now but um, we, we talk a lot on this show about um, 
you know, mental health and resilience and 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 uh, overcoming setbacks. And you just mentioned there, you know, you got released by Arsenal. Like, what was? Can you talk us through a little bit, like what that was like, like just for for yourself, uh, how you how you how you picked yourself up, how you stayed focused, and like, did you did you believe that you were going to keep in football, or was there was there a real concern that might be it for you? Yeah, no, it was it was a tough time. Obviously, it's it's also a, a tough time because you're you're doing your GCSEs as well, and you're, you're trying to stay focused on that and. Um, Try and give yourself all yourself to football as well, and um, yeah, yeah. No, it, it was tough. Obviously, I I remember not wanting to tell my friends that I'd been released. It was almost sort of embarrassing. I'd been at Arsenal yeah. so 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 long, and sort of known for for playing for Arsenal. And then, yeah, it was a reality hit. And yeah, no, I think I I was able to pick myself up quite quickly. And like I said, with with Ethan's dad, and um, yeah, a lot of people helped me with with getting trials. I think I I trialed in. I went to so many different clubs and and got told no as well there and I, I always had a sort of belief and yeah sort of confidence that, that I'd find somewhere and uh, mm-hmm. yeah luckily like Bournemouth uh, took the chance on me and then yeah the the rest is history really Is there, is there like a time limit sorry Bridget uh, is there like a time limit where you think right well, I've been released um, ex- I mean how old were you when, when that happened? I would have been yeah 16 16 16 so you're like, well, if I keep trialing and I don't get anywhere by the time I'm 18, like that's it. I'm gonna to have to find another job. Like, is there is, is do you feel like a time constraint on it, or is it just like, I no, I want to be a footballer. I'll keep going. Yeah, I've I think it's probably the the second one, and I've always yeah since I was a kid, I've always wanted to to be a footballer. I've always used to say I wanted to be a, a policeman or a fireman, but that was never true. It was always because. Uh, I was told that I needed to have a backup and that was just right. the first thing I could think of but yeah no it was always football for me and um, yeah no I think yeah I, to be fair I didn't it didn't really get that long in terms of when I was released and when I um, uh-huh. signed for me to start doubting and if I could make it I okay. think I was lucky in terms of I went straight into trialing before the, the season had finished really and then um, yeah by the by the summer I I signed for a new club and I didn't have to, to worry about what I was going to need, do next really I could I could just remain focused on, on trying to get into a, to a new team really Well it's a credit to yourself Jaden because there's, you know, there's a, lot of, a lot of youngsters listening to this podcast as well um, and you know everybody goes through rejection in some form of a life you know we're, we, we were lucky enough to be footballers we've got a very similar pathway with rejection twice I, I used it as motivation um, when I when I got rejected, I was I had a, a you know a good father figure that was saying, "Listen, go and prove these coaches wrong. Go and use that as motivation, and go and go and tr- still follow your dreams." And I had a backup plan like you. I want to be a school teacher just because it was a school te- te- teacher saying, "What are you going to do when you don't become a professional footballer?" If you don't, I was like, "Well, I want to be like you, sir. I'll be a school teacher." You know, you just yeah, I frequently yeah. just set it out the blue. So for you to have that kind of um, what you've just said there it, it's invaluable for a lot of a lot of people that would be listening to this whether they're being rejected in business or like you know their companies or whatever or, or in, in life in general um to to use it as a positive and try and you know there's always a there's always something that can get get us out of like a, a dark and dreary place there's uh, you've just got to be up for the challenge so well said mate i like that appreciate it thank you um, well, we, we won't take up um, any more of your time, Jaden. I'm sure you've got a busy day. I know you've been training already, and uh, so we'll let you go. I, I just want to ask if uh, next time you give Pat a, a proper spanking on FIFA, can I just watch? I'll just have a yeah, shot. I'll yeah. just be a voyeur. That's all I want to do. I just want to have a little share play, and I just, I just want to watch, enjoy the show. That's all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'll put on a show for you, and yeah, no problem. No. <laughs> Thank you. Matt, Thank you, Matt. Matt, when are you next over, mate? Because whenever, whenever you're next over in the UK, Matt, we need to organise something, right? Because there's that many games. As I've told you, for a 44 year old man as well, I reckon I can still mix it with you lot because I'm, I'm still have a little, I will still have a little go on with me, with me son. Yeah. And um, <laughs> the, the other one that we, we we play something else as well where it, it gets smaller and smaller in a time frame. Fortnite. Fortnite. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm telling you, I, I can still mix it. So we need to get something organised where we'll all have a call I mean, game you, off, right? You need a PS5 though, mate. You're probably still on PS2. You are. Yeah. What have you got? Oh, honestly, you you are horrible, man. You are horrible. <laughs> Jaden, it's not true what I said about him earlier. I think he's a total <laughs> c- <laughs> Right, well, stuff, on, on that bombshell, we will, we will let you go, my friend. Thank you so much for coming on um, after such a big weekend for you. We really appreciate you taking the time. Um, and uh, best of luck with not just the rest of the season, obviously, but, but beyond that, hopefully. Um, but particularly this, this weekend with, uh, with a tough game at St Mary's. Uh, best of luck with everything and thank you so much. 
Cheers, guys. Wish you all the best, Jim, mate. Cheers. Enjoy. Thank you. This is the official Leeds United podcast.